It's the grandson of right thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Life. We have been talking about the 3D and how it has no power over you in your life whatsoever. That's why I'm saying no power. It literally has no power over you. An illusion works as long as you believe it. But does the illusion actually have any power at all? No. So it is with your 3D circumstances. The things that are seen are temporal. So then am I lying to you? Is an illusion temporary or is it forever? So the world you're living in is a temporal world. Painted up. Illusion. Trying to decorate it to make it look enticing to you. Isn't that what people are doing in this world? Isn't that what plastic surgery is? Cosmetic surgery? Makeup? Alterations and all this shit people are doing to themselves? Isn't that what that is? Painting the outside of the cup to look beautiful? But the inside is actually a corpse? Well, isn't that what Yahushua told you all? He also says that the, they clean the outside of the cup and the platter. But the inside is full of all types of extortion and excess. See that? They go about in the clothing of a sheep. But inwardly they are a ravenous wolf. So do you see that? Everything out there is an illusion. In other words, it's what he's telling you. What I'm reminding you of. It has no power over you. We're going to read about that. What the 3D will cause you to feel naturally in your natural mind or the carnal mind. What the illusion makes you feel. And what the truth reveals to you. So what the illusion makes you feel, but what the truth reveals. That's what we're going to discover. The book of Exodus, chapter 14, start at verse 1. And Abba spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before pi ha between Migdol and the sea, over against baal Zephon, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. So he tells Moshe to tell the children of Israel to go to a certain location. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, so once Pharaoh, the one pursuing Israel, sees that they're there, he will say, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. They are trapped, in other words. So when he sees you go there where I'm telling you to go, he will think that you're trapped. And he will pursue you there. So I want you to slow down there for a minute, Israel, since you're the little flock there. Israel. What would that make you feel if you were going to an unknown location and then you see a great army coming, pursuing you there? What will you feel? Well, let's see what they felt. Four, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. See, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh hmm. and upon all of his host army that the Egyptians may know that I am Abba and they did so and they did so so they did it go to this location once the Egyptians see you're there they will chase after you there because they'll think you're trapped and I will harden him so that he does it I'm going to make sure that he does it Five, and it was told the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So what was Israel doing there? Well, Israel, what are you doing here? 
Are you serving them? Well, let's see. Do you work for their companies? Do you work for their corporations with their names on it? Does your paycheck come with their name on it? Do they sign your checks? So then you're serving them. <laughs> they knew you were, and they said, why have we let them go from serving us? You see that? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. So let's fast forward to modern day. So the children of Israel here in America are delivered. So they start leaving America. The Pharaoh says, man, this isn't good, man. They're leaving. Man. We were making so much money off of them with Nike and Louis Vuitton and Gucci and whatever else. We were making so much money. We can't let them go. They were serving us. Working for us at Burger King and McDonald's. <laughs> Y'all see this? We can't let them go. So they jump in all their Humvees, see, their tanks, and their military, and they chase after you. See, that's what's happening here. So now you look back over your shoulder as you're walking on foot, and you see a bunch of Humvees and tanks coming over the horizon. How do you think you're going to start feeling? See, that's the point. So continuing, verse 8, And Abba hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with an high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them. All the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, see the Humvees and the tanks, and overtook them in camping by the sea behind pa ha before baal Zephon. So he found them in the very location Abba told them to go. <laughs> so they did what Abba said, first of all. And then the Egyptians did what Abba said they would do. See that? They found them in that exact spot. Verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh... The children of Israel lifted up their eyes. Remember I said, look over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. T tanks, Humvees, soldiers, M16 rifles, <laughs> grenade launchers, all kind of shit. They're coming over there. Helicopters flying over. We're just making it modern. Jets flying through the sky screaming. Mm-hmm. The Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. Oh, see, just like you would be if you saw what I just described to you coming over the hill. You know who's coming, and you know why they're coming. Okay? And they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto Abba. There we go, Israel. There we go. So they cried out to Abba. And they said unto Moshe, watch what they're going to say, though, they're messed up here, watch this. Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? What are they saying? Moses, why did you do this? Why did you bring us out here? There weren't enough graves in Egypt so that we could be buried, so you brought us all the way out here so we could die out here and be buried in the wilderness? Why'd you do this? You deceived us. You tricked us. We've been duped by you. See that there? Verse 12. Is not this the word that we te did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Did y'all hear that good and clear? So they said, didn't we already tell you? See, if you're an Israelite, you know this kind of way of talking. You know this because you know your own nature as an Israelite. The Israelites, we'd be the first ones to be like, when something go wrong, we'd be like, man, didn't I tell you this shit was going to go like that, man? Damn, I know I should have been fucking with you. That's how we talk, see. I know it may offend some people to hear it, but that's just the way Israelites talk. They rebellious house, the most rebellious house. <laughs> that's what the Bible says. 
So as soon as something go wrong, they say, see, man, I knew better than this shit, man. I knew better than come out here with your ass dealing with you. See? They lose a bet. I knew I shouldn't have did this shit, man. Damn, I done lost the rent money. My baby mama gonna be mad as hell. I ain't got no milk for the baby. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all that shit. You see that? They said, ain't just the word we told you in Egypt saying, leave us alone. Verse 13. And Moshe said unto the people, watch this, y'all. Fear ye not. So the first thing he says is what? Don't be afraid. Second thing he says, stand still. <clears throat> stand still. So if a big ass bear is coming, <clears throat> what would you be told to do? Stand still or start running? Stand still. If a dog is rushing towards you, barking and snarling, would you, should you run or should you stand still? What should you do? Well, there's no different here with these Egyptians, which is the dog running at you. See, the tanks and shit, it's just the dog coming barking. He got a lot of bark, but he ain't got no damn bite. As we're going to find out here real quick. So we see the Israelites become afraid because they're looking. Didn't it say they lifted up their eyes? What did I tell you about? Remember the last video I had Sandra Bullock color my eyes? I'm about, remember Sandra Bullock? Don't look. Ignore the 3D. So stand still. Ignore it. Ignore these niggas. With all they yee high and hollering and coming and riding their chariots. Talking about, we're going to get you niggas. We're going to get you. Just keeping it real with you. Don't let that shit phase you. Ignore it. So let's continue. He says, Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of Abba, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. You shall see them again no more forever. Well, that's what he said. Hold on. All right. So we see that Moses, he pays no attention to the 3D. The Egyptians, nor what the Israelites were saying when they came at him with all that fiery indignation. Hey, man, why you do this, man? Didn't you listen when we told you to leave us alone? He completely ignored that. Fear not. Stand still. Watch the salvation of God. Watch. He's ignoring all of the 3D, if you can see that. Verse 14. Abba shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. So stand still and hold your peace. I'm always referencing Christ on the boat with those men because it's the same thing. The waves represent the Egyptians coming. The wind represents the wilderness and you not knowing where you are. You see that? Yahusha represents God fighting for you. Did he say peace and still? Did he use those two words when he was on that boat with those men? Did he use the same words Moses used, in other words? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And what happened to the 3D circumstances? They obeyed him. Now, we're going to understand what that means a little bit more deeper here in a second. Obeyed him. Okay? The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And Abba said unto Moshe, Wherefore criest thou unto me? He said this several times. What are you crying to me for? <laughs> Interesting thing for Abba to be saying, right? Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they may go forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Mm -hmm. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians that they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, upon his horsemen, all those tanks, helicopters, jets, jet fuel flying through the air and shit. Niggas going yee-haw in the back of a tank with a 50 cal. All of that. I will get me honor upon them. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Abba when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. 
And the angel of El, which went before the camp of Israel, Nahusha, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them, protecting them. See? And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them. Hear this clearly. It was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these. So are you these or them? Which one are you? You be that, we these. <laughs> oh, you be that, we these. Okay. He says, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went in the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, Abba looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of the fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels, bye-bye Humvees and tanks and shit, so that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Do you hear that today, Israel? They knew it. They said, This shit ain't going to work, man. We fight against God's people. Meanwhile, what was God's people doing? Biting their fingernails, nervous as hell. Want you to hear that good. Was there any reason for them to be biting their fingernails talking about it was better for us to be in Egypt? Nope. Nope. That's why Moses wasn't tripping. He was standing there chilling with the rod up in the air like, all right, let's go, y'all. Let's go across this water. They're like, nigga, you can't go across there? Uh, what the? Yeah, I said stand still and watch. Now, do you see the 3D submitting to the power of God? Are you walking on dry ground or is it a little soggy under your feet? Or are your shoes dry? The children of Israel went across dry shod. They walked through the midst of a sea, dry shod. Anybody want to fuck with this or what? I know I'm, that sounds crazy me saying that. I know it do. But if you understand spiritual things, then you understand what I'm saying. My father loved me. So you can dance. You can flip. You can do a somersault. You can do a split. You can do a yoga pose. You can dance around on a magic carpet like Aladdin for all I care. I'm going to ignore your dumb ass and watch you fade into the breeze. Continuing. And the Lord said unto Moshe, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, and the water that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moshe stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it. They fled against the morning? Hmm, interesting. And Abba overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. So how many of them made it? Thus, verse 30, Abba saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which Abba did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared Abba and believed Abba and his servant Moshe. Do you hear that, Israel? So did the Israelites have to pick up a gun? So then put yours down, Israelite. Did the Israelites have to pick up an Uzi or a damn grenade launcher or body armor? 
Did he have to do a bunch of push-ups and do a bunch of deadlifts and squats? Did he have to run a bunch of miles and train? Did he have to become the damn last airbender and train and build his strength up first? Or did he just listen to Abba and Abba made him the airbender? The water bender. <laughs> the element bender. Say, lift up your hand. Why are you crying to me? Lift up your hand. You're the water bender. Bend that water. Bend that air. Come on. It made an east wind blow. Come on now. Come on. That's what happened. Let's go to the book of Chronicles. That was our first witness. We want to get two. And then we're going to get a third. Chapter 20 of Second Chronicles. I'll wait a little second for y'all to get there. Let's start at verse 1. And it came to pass, after this also, that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Here we go again. Israel's being attacked by several armies. Okay. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazotamar, <laughs> which is in, in Gedi. So here come a big ass army. I'm translating for y'all. Lame is terms. <laughs> It's a big ass army coming, Jehoshaphat. What you gonna do? And Jehoshaphat feared. Here we go. Just like the children of Israel, when they saw the army coming, he see the army coming, he got scared. He got scared. And set himself to seek Abba. There we go. And proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. There we go. And Judah gathered themselves together. Unity. Brotherly love. Philadelphia. Truly. Judah gathered themselves together. Together. Y'all hear that? And to ask help of Abba, even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek Abba. There we go. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of Abba, before the new court, and said, O Abba El of our fathers, are not thou El in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Are not thou our El, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, your friend, forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for your name, saying, If... When evil cometh upon us, hear this, Israel. If when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, hear me today, Israel, if you can. This is your salvation. Listen. If evil come upon us as the sword, they don't want to kill you, judgment, lock you away for a long time, cast you out, whatever, pestilence, famine. We stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and we cry unto thee in our affliction, then you will hear and help us. So what do you think going to save you in the 3D world? Nothing will. That is not what your forefathers said. You have to know who in the hell you are out here. So you can understand what's for you to do. Like I said in my last video. If you know you're an Israelite, now you know what to do when pestilence comes, sword comes, famine comes, judgment comes. Whenever that shit comes toward you, you stand still. Isn't that what he said? Stand. Don't become afraid. Don't run. Don't shuck and jive. Don't try to make a negotiation. Don't open your damn mouth. You stand. And cry out to your father. Verse 11. Behold I say. How they reward us. To come. And cast us out. 
of your possession, which you have given us to inherit it. Are we scattered, Israel? Are you kicked out of your land? Here it is. Here it is. O R L, will thou not judge them? This is a prayer, guys. For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Can you hear this? We have no might. Okay, no guns, no army. What nation on the earth doesn't have an army, a nation, a flag? Nothing. Israel, so-called black people, Negroes, African Americans. That's why they're called all them crazy ass names. You don't know who you are. You can't do what you're supposed to do. You niggas ain't doing what you're supposed to do because you don't know who you are. He knew who he was, so he's doing what he's supposed to do. So, continuing. Our L, will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company. We got no might against them. That cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. Don't know what to do. Didn't I say in my last video? Isn't that a jacked up feeling? When you look around and say, I don't know what to do about this. There it is right there. Despair. Hopelessness. Not a fighting chance. Nothing I can do to stop this great wave. That's what the Egyptians were like. A great wave that could not be stopped. That's what these niggas is like. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones and their wives and their children. Houses in order. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mathaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of Abiyah in the midst of the congregation. So when they prayed, God gave them some answers, didn't he? And how did he answer them? By coming upon a man. So I say, can you hear this today? It told you who he was in his lineage, what tribe he was from, and everything. So the spirit came on the and the spirit of the Lord came upon him in the midst of the congregation, and he said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Who's talking? Abba is, so listen carefully. And you, King Jehoshaphat, you saith. The Lord unto, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but elves. I brought them niggas here to fight me. That's why I came down here in the midst. Now I'm telling it to you to your face. Is that what happened? Is that what happened, in Israel? A mighty father, man. I'm almost overwhelmed, y'all. <sighs> Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed. Is that the same thing he said to them by that river, I mean by the Red Sea? Be not afraid, fear not. Is that the first words that he said? Is it the first words he said here? Does he change? Is he speaking through a man both times? So how is he going to answer your prayers, Israel? <clears throat> By sending his spirit into a man so that he can speak true words to you of what God is saying, which is stop thinking about the 3D. Is God doing that right now? Is he telling you stop caring about the 3D, ignore it? Or am I telling you that? I figured out through much research and diligent searching that this world was an illusion. And I found, I found out that it's no need in paying it any attention. All you have to do is do this. I did that. Or is that what we're reading? Okay, then. Okay. Do Alba change? <laughs> so if a great flood of enemies is coming for Jerusalem then that means that he has to lift up a standard against that enemy. 
What's his standard? The branch shall lift up an ensign. Okay. Simple as that. Simple as that. Like I said, how he going to do it? He's proving it to you right now how he going to do it. Let's continue. He says, Fear not, nor be dismayed. The battle ain't yours, but mine. Tomorrow go you down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. Mm, cliff of Ziz. And you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand you still. Is this the same thing? And see the salvation of Abba with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for Abba Yah will be with you. Is it the same? And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korhites stood up to praise Abba Yael of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in Abba your El. See, you love and believe. That's what I, come on. So shall you be established. Believe his prophets. So sh you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and they should pr that they should praise the beauty of holiness. Start singing and praising God. You have to give him praise for what you hope for. That proves that your faith. That's why he's saying believe. And we're going to prove we believe by singing and giving God praise for our victory. Even though there's millions of you niggas out there. That don't mean shit. Our God has already given us the victory. He's already given us his word. Like I say, it's overwhelming, boy. Right. And they went out before the army and to say, Praise Abba for his mercy endureth forever. This is what they were saying as they were marching. And when they began to sing and to praise, when they began to do what? Sing and praise. What did Paul and Silas do? When they began to praise, praise and sing, what happened to them? Did they get out of those chains they were in? The 3D circumstances that looked like they were locked down? Come on. I hope you can hear the clarity coming forth today because it's coming through very clearly. And when they began to sing in praise, Abba set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, Edom, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. So they fought each other. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked into the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. How many of the Egyptians escaped? We already covered that. None of them did. How many of these niggas escaped? None of them did. So what did the Israelites do when they got there? Well, they saw all them dead niggas laying out there that were supposedly coming to kill them. Now them niggas is dead. You're going to fuck up yourself trying to damage me. Y'all understand why I say these things in my raps now? And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry. And there were three days in gathering the spoil. It was so much. So they went from fearing for their lives to becoming filthy rich, talking about bling bling. Every time I come around the city, bling bling. Every time I buy a new ride, bling bling. 
They went from, I'm about to die, to bling, bling. You explain that to me? Can you? Because they stood still and praised Abba and just started singing. Thank you, Abba. Your mercy is good. Your mercy is good. That's all they did. And then when they got to the battlefield, all right, y'all, y'all ready to go see what's going on? What the hell is going on here? Somebody got to these niggas before we did. Well, hey, uh, didn't Abba say he was going to destroy these niggas? He was going to fight? The battle wasn't ours, but it was his? Yeah, that's what he said. Well, this is the results of the battle? Did they fight? Because it looked like only Abba was fighting. Did they fight him back? Because, woo, you know he did. So, <clears throat> there's example and witness number two. Now, do the two witnesses' stories have any deviations in them? Show don't. They show don't. All right. Now, let's get one more witness. The book of Joshua. Chapter 10, starting at verse 12. Then spake Yahusha. <laughs> I want to say Yahusha. I'm going to say as it's written. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. He said in the sight of Israel, Son, well, let's go back a little bit. Let's go back a little bit. All right. Let's go back just a little bit. start at Joshua chapter 8 verse 18 and the Lord said unto Joshua stretch out the spear that is in thine hand toward I for I will give it into thine hand and Joshua stretched out the spear that he had in his hand toward the city the same thing that he told Moses remember stretch out stretch stretch out that rod stretch it forth that mean I'm about to do something you see what I'm saying that mean I'm about to do something Okay. Verse 26. For Joshua drew not his hand back wherewith he stretched out the spear until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. See? Held up that spear. Okay. And Joshua burnt Ai and made it a heap forever, even a desolation unto this day. And the king of Ai, he hanged on a tree until eventide. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it at the entering of the gate of the city and raise thereon a great heap of stones that remaineth unto this day. Okay. Now, let's jump ahead. So we see some fighting is going on here. All right. All right. Now, Gibeon, that's what we want to get to. Chapter 10, verse 1. Now, it came to pass when Adonazek, Adonazedek, excuse me, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai, which we just read, and had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king. All right, so he's hearing what's going on. He's like, damn, Joshua tearing shit up, man. Pretty much is what he's saying. He's having great success. How the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities and because it was greater than I, and all the men thereof were mighty. Wherefore, Adonazedek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Horem, king of Hebron, and unto Piram, king of Jarmuth, and unto Japhia, king of Lashish, 
and unto Debir, king of Eglon, saying, Come up unto me and help me that we may smite Gibeon, for it hath made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, Lashish, and Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and they camped before Gibeon and made war against it. Okay? And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp of Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us, for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. In other words, Joshua, come save us. That's what your name means. <laughs> so Joshua ascended. Look at these words. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him and all the mighty men of valor. He and his saints. Mm -hmm. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Haran and smote them to Azekah and unto Machida. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Haran that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died. They were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. So while the children of Israel were fighting their enemies, Abba was helping them, as usual, while by killing them with hailstones. And more people died by Abba's hailstones than Israel's swords. Can you hear it today? Can you hear it today? Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, in front of witnesses, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. For the voice, for the voice of a man. <laughs> for Abba fought for Israel. So does he change? So will he fight for you today? Now, 3D circumstances. The sun and the moon, is that out there which you can see with your eye? Did they have to submit to the voice of a man? Joshua didn't say, hey son, God says he needs you to stand still. He said, son, stand still. We got some more work to do. We need, we need some more light. We got some more jacking up we got to do. We need more time. So stay your ass right there. Don't move. Moon, you stay right over there in the valley. Don't you come up here yet. You stay down there and hide and, hide and wait till I'm done. Now, swing. That's the last man. Yeah, he threw. All right, y'all can go ahead and do your thing, sun and moon. And everybody witnessed it happen. Just like the Red Sea parting. Like when Christ said, what's harder to say? Take up thy bed and walk or thy sins be forgiven thee. Which one is harder to say? Sun, stand still. Or waves and wind, peace be still. Which one's harder to say? So then what Yahusha did, Joshua did, Moshe did, uh-huh, we all should do. Yeah, that's right. Greater than these that you see me do, these things, greater than these things shall they do. So go ahead and do it, Israel. Because you got the tools that you need. We just read it. Ignore your 3D. They come like, man, here go an eviction notice, nigga. Ignored. Hey, here go some papers that you need to sign away your rights. Ignored. Hey, we need you to answer some questions and snitch on your man. Ignored. What else you want to say? I'm ignoring everything that you say. I'm leaving your ass on red. So why you keep sending me text messages? Them bitches going to a spam folder, man. So send away.
I'm ignoring your dumb ass like you do narcissists. No contact, ho. Hey, man, don't you see this big bomb? I got this butt and I'm going to push it to blow the whole world up. Well, that's on you. Blow your world up. I ain't of this world. So it's destroy it, throw trash on it, kick, kill on it, steal on it, do whatever you want to do in your world. Go ahead. Esau is the end of this world. Jacob is the world that follows it. I'm Jacob. So what the hell I got to do with your world, Esau? Nothing. I got nothing to do with it. Yo, Ronald McDonald, corny ass, Mickey Mouse, Walt Disney ass, I believe I can fly ass, fake ass, celebrity Hollywood walk of fame with a star ass niggas, Grammy in your hand for some bullshit you dropped ass niggas, sliding down a pole when you're a grown ass man but you'd rather be a girl ass niggas. I ain't part of that at all. Why would I want to be? Why would I want to castrate myself because I'm confused about what Abba put there? Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to be a part of that? Why would I want to tell my woman to slaughter her face? Then I'll think you're beautiful, baby. So wait a second. You married me. We got some money. Now I need to slaughter my face to become beautiful. Well, why the fuck did you marry me? You must have thought I was ugly. No, 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 no. I thought you were beautiful all along. But there's nothing wrong with tightening things up, is there? I'm not part of your, Vinici, your Da Vinci veneer horse teeth perfectly symmetrical, but underneath, it's shaved all the fuck down as world. Your teeth are just like those people, Yahushua said, when he says they decorate the outside of the tooth. <laughs> but the inside of that damn tooth is nothing but bones. <laughs> Dead men bones. That shit ain't nothing but a nub. I'm not part of that. I don't believe in shaving down what's natural to put something artificial in its place. So that I can make people think I'm beautiful. And then they go, well, isn't that some work you got done? Yeah. What's the bitch? What do you mean? What do you mean? <sighs> you thought you were ugly then. No, 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 I didn't. Nothing was wrong with the way I was. Well, then why did you change it? Because, uh, 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 because you guys kept talking your shit. Well, ignore the 3D. What we just read. Oh, uh, yeah, see how I said I'm not part of your world. Go over there, man. With you Balenciaga ugly shoe wearing ass. Sagging your pants, booty showing the whole world ass, nigga. Y'all go over there, man. Stay over there. Leave us alone. Make illusions for y'all. We don't want no illusions over here. Leave us alone, man. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Well, let me show you how much of a friend I ain't to you niggas. Let me show you. I'm showing you by how I'm talking about how y'all is. You slanderous, backstabbing ass. Sell yourselves for dollars with a dead nigga on it ass. <sighs> Prostitute yourselves to the highest bitter ass slave ass world. That's what the world is, man. Idol worshiping ass. Celebrity worshiping ass. Satan worshiping as Baphomet adoring as world. I ain't a part of that. I'm just gonna stand still and watch you get dismayed and kill yourselves. That's what you guys are going to do out there. On the ark, you chill. When the rain came down, I was chilling in a boat. Where was you chilling at? All right, y'all. This video getting kind of long, so I'm done. It was just chatting. <laughs> but y'all feel me. That's how you got to feel about the world. Completely distaste. Mm -mm, I don't want it. Like how babies do when you try to give them that piece of broccoli. Mm. Mm -mm, that's the world. Mm -mm, world. I don't want that. I don't want that. <laughs> See the one, Miss Lila.